Hello, I'm Jo from So Creative, and today I'm going to show you our um, Elna 320, which is a manual machine. And um, I want to show you its features and how to wind the bobbin, how to thread it, and it's got a needle threader as well. It's a nice little machine, actually. It comes with a great book, um, lots of diagrams, and lots of information in there as well, which is always useful. Um, it also has, if I show you here, a lovely little tray for all your bits and bobs. You can take the whole sleeve arm off as well for doing um, smaller things here. What's great about this particular model is it's got a drop-in bobbin. So it drops in like that. There's a little black knob here. You push that, this springs up and I'll take that off. I'm going to take it off ready now anyway, because we'll be winding our bobbin in a moment. It's got a needle threader, so I'll show you how to use that in a moment. That's accessed here. Um, and it's pretty easy as in dials and stitches. Okay. So without further ado, I think what we'll do is just wind a bobbin. So it comes with lots of accessories. Um, so this is a big, a big uh, spool holder cap. So actually let's go through the accessories. So I'm going to use a little red Gutterman thread. It's always a good idea to use some decent thread and we like Gutterman thread. Um, but with that thread, it will need the small, the small spool cap. Um, so I slot it on with the thread coming underneath, like so. And I'm just going to secure it with the small cap, just so as it runs nice and freely, which it does there. Um, so let's just have a look at the other accessories. So we've got a, a larger spool um, holder, screwdriver, very useful if we need to get in under here. We've got a set of needles, another spool um, holder that just slots in here if you wanted to do twin needle sewing. We've got a little lint brush, very useful because when you get a load of muck up under there, it's going to muck up your stitches best thing invented, stitch ripper. And then it's got a se selection of bobbins, uh, those are my scissors. And then we've got a blind hem foot, a zipper foot, a satin stitch or an applique foot. And in here somewhere, I think, yeah, is the button foot. There. So this particular model has got a four step buttonhole and that's the selection for it there. Okay, so let's wind the bobbin. I've put the thread on. Then the next thing I need to do is to pop it through the tension and some lovely diagrams even on the machine as well. So this is your bobbin tension. You can see by going into it, it's grabbing the thread and that is what's going to create a nice tension for the thread and it will wind them properly. So the edge of um, the end of the thread just goes up through the middle and into that little hole. And then I'm going to pop it onto the bobbin winder and just hold it like that. I'm now just going to push it over to the bobbin stopper. And then I'm going to pull this hand wheel out. Okay, so just by holding this thread now, I'm just gonna hold it for a little while and I'm going to pop my foot on the foot pedal and it's going to start turning. So as long as it's turned a few times, I can then cut this little thread off. What I don't want it to do is to get wrapped into my um, bobbin winding. So now I'm just going to pop my foot right down and you can see that it's spinning nicely, going up and down and the bobbin is winding nice and tight. What will happen is, I'm not going to wind any more, but it will get onto this bobbin winder stopper and then it won't overfill. That's what happens. So now we're going to just do everything in reverse. So I'm going to put the hand wheel back in, push the bobbin over, pick it up, cut the thread off. If you're left with a little bit too much there, just snip it so there's, there's no other thread showing. And I'm just gonna put the bobbin in now. So if you remember, we took this off. So I'll pop it back on so I can show you again. So there's a little black stopper here. We flick it over to the right. This jumps up. 
and now we're going to put our thread in, our bobbin in. So a good way of knowing that you put it in the right way is we pop it in this way and it's a P for perfect. If you imagine that's a letter P for perfect as opposed to a Q for not quite right. So we drop it in as a P for perfect and then you'll notice there's a little tiny slit here and that's going into the bobbin tension. There is even a little diagram that shows you there. So you pop it into there and then take it over to nine o'clock. I leave it like that. I don't put my bobbin case on or my bobbin cover on until I've threaded the machine. So that's what we're going to do now, thread the machine. So we take it out of the bobbin winding because that is just for the bobbin winding. But if you notice, there's a little diagram here. It will just go behind there and it just makes a little click. And now, as long as we can count and follow numbers, that's number one. That's number two. What we do need to do, make sure whenever we thread a machine, is make sure that our presser foot here is up. It was it, it is up, but that's down, that's up. What happens when it's down is that our tension discs here close together. So these must be open for us to thread. And you'll feel that the thread is moving nicely through. And I want to make sure I can see the take up lever here. So I am just going to poke it through there. See, it must go through that little hole. It kind of naturally does it if you've done everything else. So that's number three. Down here to number four. And then I'm going to go at the top of the needle. There's just a little elbow at the back. There we are. So that's that's it so far. And now I'm going to show you how to use the needle threader. So, most important thing with any needle threader on any machine is that your needle is in the right position. So if your needle is down here, then obviously when we bring our needle threader down, it's not got an eye of the needle to go through. So we have to make sure it is in its upright position. It's further up position. And just by moving the hand wheel, I know that that is in its utmost position. So all I'm going to do now is bring the needle thread down. And the idea is that there's a little hook here. Let me just see and point it with my scissors. There's a little hook there that's gonna come through the eye of the needle, okay? I'm holding this hook now with my index finger of my left hand. And I'm going to, you have to be a bit ambidextrous. I'm going to use my thumb to hook the thread underneath that little elbow and I've created a little L shape with my red thread. And now I'm going to gently lift the needle threader back and by doing so, give it a little wiggle, it's created a loop. Sorry, the light was shining on it, there it is. There's the loop and I can pull that from the back. Okay, I'm gonna show you that one more time. So make sure the needle's in the right place. Bring the needle threader down, all the way down. Hold it with your index finger. Use your thumb of your left hand to create this little L shape. And then hook it underneath here. I know that it's then caught in that little hook that's come through the back of the needle. Raise it a little bit. There's the little loop it's created. And I can then pull it from behind. Don't be tempted to pull it from the front because of course, <laughs> this is very easy. I'm just trying to get that loop. There we are. Um, and there we are. So that's the needle threaded. Obviously you can thread it yourself, but it's nice having a needle threader, but take care of needle threaders because they are never under warranty. And if you bend it because you've bashed it against the needle and instead of it coming through the eye of the needle, then it will need replacing. And if it ever needs replacing, it's just this piece that can be just popped off and you can have another one, but you might as well look after it. So now what we've got to do is bring this bobbin thread up, which is why I haven't put my bobbin cover on. So I'm holding this thread loosely with my left hand and I'm going to use the hand wheel here. Now with the hand wheel, you must always turn it towards you, never away from you. So I'm going to do a full rotation and then you'll hopefully see what happens. I'm going to let the thread go down, the needle's gone down, and you can see that it's hooked, 
and then I can give it a little tug and voila, there's my two threads. So really, they're all ready to sew. So I've got two threads, I can now put my bobbin cover on. And as you see, with this, there's lots of markings. There's beautiful markings, it's a really nice machine. It's got lots of markings to help you, to help guide you with your five eighths or whatever you're doing, inches and centimeters along here. So those two threads out at 12 o'clock, and now I'll show you how to do some sewing. So another lovely thing about this machine is it also comes with a hard cover, a hard case, which is nice, keeps it all nice and pristine. It's a very pretty looking machine, I have to say. I do, I always love the Elmers. And the thing with the Elmers is that every, um, every Janome foot or feet, which has a huge selection, they, um, they fit onto the Elmers. So we've got a sewing machine, feet and accessory guide. So if there is anything ever that you need um, to go with it, we can always advise you what to, what to purchase. So let's just see how this little one sews. So here on the dials, we've got our stitch selector. So we've got one to nine here on the paler blue. So these are the outside stitches, one to nine. So we've got it on number one, which is a straight stitch. And then if we went to number two, it will be a zigzag, etc. Okay. Here, you have, what you have to do is to also use the other dials to make sure that you've got the right settings. So with a straight stitch, all we're really interested in is our stitch length. So you can see that this is our length because the actual diagram goes from small to longer. So obviously, you know, a very short stitch right up to a long stitch, okay? A general straight stitch with just some cotton thread, uh, cotton fabric is gonna be about a two, two and a half. So let's just test it out and just do some basic sewing then I'll show you what else we can do. So we'll position our fabric, make sure it's covered, covering the feed dogs, and then we'll find our presser foot lever, which is to our right. So it's like having a new car sometimes. You might be used to having your indicators on the left and you get a new car and the indicators on the right. So you just, you know, it's just about getting used to it. This one is on the right and that's our presser foot. Always good practice to start with the needle down. So we'll use, turn our hand wheel towards us and pop the needle down. So I'm going to do a few stitches and then I'm going to do a reverse stitch. So it's gonna go as fast as my foot makes it go. So this is where, you know, if you're used to driving a car, you can either drive a nice steady pace or drive a Ferrari, but I suggest you just drive a nice steady pace to start off with. So I'm gonna do a few stitches and then I'm going to do a reverse stitch. So here's the reverse button. I just push it down and it's gonna go backwards. Okay, so now I can go forwards again. It's a lovely, lovely, smooth machine. So I'm gonna turn the corner, which means I need to put my needle down. So I'm using my hand wheel, bringing it towards me, lifting the presser foot and turning the corner. And I'm just gonna do a few more stitches. So if I want to finish off, I could finish off by doing another reverse stitch. So hold it down, bring it forward, and that's it. I'll raise the needle take the presser foot up, pull it out to the side, and there is a little thread cutter at the side. There we are. So I'll just show you quickly then as well how to change the stitch to say a zigzag. And then maybe I might just do a fancy stitch just to show you those as well. So a zigzag stitch, we're just gonna go to number two. So with a zigzag, we now need to think about how wide we want the zigzag and how long we want the zigzag. So let's leave it at a five width, because that's the widest it can go. And I'll leave it at two and a half and see what happens. So start with the needle down. And there we are. That is, if I put the needle down, I turn, that is a pretty decent zigzag. But what I could do is make it a little less wide. So I can move this to say a three. Perhaps bring it down to a two, and then we'll get a more delicate zigzag. Okay, so you can see the difference there. Just by manipulating and changing the dials, you can do lots of things. So I'm going to now go to a number nine here, but I don't want to go through these. 
and go to number nine whilst my needle is down because I'll show you why. So I'm gonna bring my needle up, so moving the hand well towards me because every time I chunk through, can you see how it moves the needle? That would bend your needle. So you must make sure that your needle is up. So I'm now on number nine. Now, if we have a look at number nine, it's a crescent shape. So to create that crescent shape, we've got to have our stitch width at the highest, which is a five, but we want our stitches really close together. So we want them a lot closer, like say a buttonhole or a number one. So I'm gonna just pop them here with a close together and see what we get. So I've got a nice right red thread on this white fabric. So needle down and hopefully it's creating some crescent shapes. So I'll pop the needle down so as we can have a look. Look at that. Now I could possibly go a little bit closer together. So by doing that, I need to bring the stitch length closer together. So I'm going to take it down to here. And as long as the fabric will feed through, so the feed dogs are feeding it through, which it is, it's fine. So there we are. So we've got a lot closer together zigzags, uh, little um, crescents. Okay. So that's all our main stitches. But of course, we've got these stitches in the darker blue. So people say, well, how do we access those? And what are they? So if you see here, we've got the darker blue inner. And when we go to number one, for instance, it's also number 10. When we go to, I like number 12. So when we go to number three, let's go to number three. Back to number three. It's also this pretty stitch here. So let's have a look at these dials here. If we look down here, it says SS. Stands for stretch stitches. So I'm going to turn the knob all the way down to here. And I'm perhaps, because it is a decorative stitch, I'm going to start off with it as minus, and that means that the stitches are gonna come close together. So to recap, we're on stitch 12 on the dark blue, which is the SS, which is here and we've changed the dial to the SS stitches here. So when I start to sew now with my needle down, it's creating a pretty pattern. Needle down, then I can show you there. So it's got a lot of scope, this machine. It's got lots going for it. So let's bring the needle up, taking the presser foot up. Use the thread cutter at the side, and that's about it. So if you'd like to, you can have a look at our on our website, which is sewcreative.org.uk, and we've got lots of machines on there, but I'm loving the Elna 320. Thank you.